Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to conclude our study of the great book of Jonah with the fourth and final chapter. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Bible as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. In our last Bible study, we learned in the third chapter of this great book of Jonah that repentance always brings God's forgiveness, okay? Very important that we understand that. And repentance is not just a change of heart, but a change of one's actions, okay? So with that, we're going to dive straight into the fourth and final chapter of the great book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 4 verse 1 says, But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. What displeased Jonah? The fact that Nineveh responded in a positive way to the message that God sent him down there to preach. Jonah didn't want them to repent. Jonah didn't want them to be saved. We're about to find out why now. So Jonah was unhappy that the whole nation repented. It says it, it, uh, it, deplete, it displeased Jonah exceedingly that so, so exceedingly that he was very angry. Verse 2, and he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray to you, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth thee of the evil. He says, this is why I didn't want to do it. Because I knew that you would show mercy to them if they would respond in a positive way to the message that you sent me down there to preach. I didn't want these people to be saved. See, these people were the enemy of Jonah's people. And so Jonah didn't want them to be saved. That's why he didn't want to go down there and call them to repentance. And, you know, he said, I knew, God, you were gracious and merciful and slow to anger and of great kindness. And the reason he knew this is because the Spirit of God had taught him this, and he probably learned it as well when he was reading the Psalms. Um, wait a minute. Was, uh, was uh, the law given? When, yeah, the law had been given when, when Jonah was a prophet. I just want to make sure. So he probably read Psalms 103, uh, where it says, starting at verse 8, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He probably read that. It says in verse 9, He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. This is the character of Almighty God now. The word chide when you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, mean to toss, that is, grapple, most figuratively to wrangle, uh, that is, hold a controversy. So God doesn't hold on to his anger. He's a forgiving God, and he knew that. And so he didn't want the people in Nineveh to be saved. All right, let's see what happens. Verse 3, he continues, Therefore now, O Lord, Take, I beseech thee, I beg you, I urge you. That's what the word beseech means. Take, I beg you, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Now, this man then lost his cotton-picking mind. He said he'd rather be dead. <laughs> he didn't want to live anymore because of Nineveh. Repent it. Wow. Verse 4. Then said the Lord, doeth thou well to be angry? God says, are you doing the right thing being angry right now? Verse 5, that's verse 4. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there it made him a booth and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. So he was still hoping that maybe they would, all of them wouldn't repent or they might go back to sinning again and God would overthrow that city. So he went out there and sat in the shade, in the shade and said, maybe, just maybe, God is going to destroy them yet. Okay, verse 6. And the Lord God prepared a gourd, which is a plant, and made it come up over Jonah. 
that it might be a, a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceeding glad of the gourd. So God made this huge plant grow and provided him with a lot of shade. And, and Jonah was uh, happy about not having to sit out in the hot sun in that booth. Verse 7, but God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day and smote the gourd that it withered. He killed the gourd the next day. Verse 8, and it came to pass when the sun did arise that God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished in himself to die and said, it is better for me to die than live. So God turned up the heat on him. Because God wants to teach his prophet a little lesson. See, God had great love for Jonah. And the Bible tells us that whom the Lord loveth, he will correct. And so that's the main point of this fourth chapter of Jonah. So God turned the heat up on him after he killed the gourd. Verse 9. And God said to Jonah, Doeth thou well to be angry for the gourd? Do you think the way you're thinking right now is right? that you're angry about that plant I killed? And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. So Jonah said, yeah, yeah, I'm right to think this way. Verse 10. Then said the Lord, thou hast had pity on the gourd, on this plant for which thou hast not labored. You didn't do anything to bring this plant into existence. He said, neither made it, it, made it, it grow. You didn't make it grow which came up in a night and perished in a night. He said, you had more pity over that plant that you had nothing to do with. Then he says in verse 11, and should not I spare Nineveh, that great city wherein or in which are more than six score thousand. A score is 20. 20 times six is 120. So 120,000 persons. Now, how many people were in the city? He says, you worried about that stupid plant? He says, and should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, in which are more than 120,000 persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left, and also much cattle? God says, shouldn't I be concerned about these people who have never had a chance to hear the gospel and receive me? So he wanted to teach his prophet a very valuable lesson. And that lesson is the Lord loves all people and he will give everybody an opportunity to accept him as their God and his son as their savior. God will make sure of it. I have some people ask me, uh, Minister Porter, what about those people down in Africa and down in the rainforest who never heard the gospel? Well, the Lord had this story put here to let you know that he's going to make sure that they and everyone else have a chance to hear the gospel. And, and, and then they can either accept it or reject it. So God is always fair. That's another thing we need to take from this fourth chapter. But the main thing is found in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11 and 12, where the wise King Solomon wrote, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, Neither be weary of his correction, uh, verse 12, for whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as the father, the son, in whom he delighted. That word chastening, when you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, is the Hebrew word 4148. It means properly chastisement, figuratively reproof, warning, or instruction, also restraint. So God had great love for his prophet. And his prophet had to learn a very valuable lesson that God didn't just love Israel. He loves all people and he will give all people an opportunity to accept his son as Lord and Savior. So if this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, I encourage you to go to patreon.com slash Barton underscore Porter and please make a financial pledge of any amount, whatever you can afford, every little bit helps, okay? Every, every dollar, every penny helps. It will be a tremendous blessing to me. And you will be helping me 
to continue to produce these Bible studies and to get the true teachings of our Father out by means of the Internet. And that is the Holy Bible from Genesis to Revelation. So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, May the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.